Welcome to my channel. Uh, this is my daily news episode. I guess that's what I'm going to call it, daily news. And I have several things I want to talk to you about. Uh, but the first thing is, or well, the first thing is, uh, the uh, reaction video that I did to Angelica today. Now I've forgotten. Jordan, I think it is. Angelica Jordan. Uh, but before I get to all of that and the other things I want to talk to you about, uh, I have to thank you for coming to my channel. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for commenting. The commenting is just blowing my mind. And the growth of the channel is blowing my mind, too. It's, it's unreal. Um, I just can't thank you enough. I just, I'm amazed. So, yeah, I'll just do this first. <clears throat> I was reading this article today. It's about a girl who uh, died in Oklahoma, and she uh, claimed to be uh, non-binary, whatever that means. And because she died... Uh, not too long after she had been beaten up in a bathroom and that's a whole nother story but I'm not I'm not going to get into all that because I don't I'm not interested in promoting this story or talking about it really but I read this one thing in here and I just I, I, I have no clue what they're talking about and I'm hoping somebody in the comments can tell me what this is it says Freedom Oklahoma an LGBT activist group said in a statement Using the teen's nickname, we know that Nex Benedict, the student who died, faces being dead named and misgendered in death after a horrible attack that killed Nex, possibly because of Nex's TGNC plus identity. I can't keep up with you guys. I'm, I'm having enough trouble trying to keep track of LGBTQ what is it, IA or 1A or something, plus, 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 all this stuff. What the heck is TGNC plus? Can somebody please tell me that? Because I don't have a clue. That's my only question about this. I'll put the link to the article in the description, just like I always do, so you can look at it. But somebody tell me what TGNC plus stands for, because I got no idea. Anyway. <clears throat> enough of that um, I published or uploaded a uh, a video reaction to Angelica Jordan's performance at uh, America's Got Talent and YouTube promptly slapped me with a copyright block block and I disputed it as I do with every copyright block I get and normally what happens is within two or three days they'll release it but in this case, I got back almost immediately a no, your dispute is rejected from them. So then I did what I thought was the right thing to do next, which was appeal it. But here's what blew my mind. The instant that I filed the appeal, the, the video was made public. Can somebody explain how that works? That makes no sense to me at all. They, they rejected my dispute and refuse to unblock the video, but as soon as I appeal, they unblock it? I don't understand that. And I, furthermore, I don't understand what YouTube's rules are because I gave them links to five different reaction videos on the same video I did that are on YouTube and are publicly available. So I don't, I don't get it. YouTube makes no sense whatsoever to me. But I guess I'm just an old man and I don't know any better. One other thing I noticed was that uh, I have enough subscribers now that apparently I can monetize my channel. But it looks to me, and I haven't investigated it thoroughly, but it looks to me like I do not have to have ads on my channel. And if that is possible, I will celebrate because I hate ads. And I really don't care about monetizing the channel anyway. I don't need money, so what would I do with it? I talked about this the other day. I Basically, I'd either give it to charity or give it to somebody on my channel that needs help. 
<clears throat> but anyway, that's just some cleanup news, I guess you'd call it. Um, I got an email uh, today. I subscribe to uh, several, um, I guess, call them news organizations. They're they're online news organizations. They're part of Substack, basically. And it's the only place nowadays where you can get, you know, unbiased, accurate information. And so today I got this article, and you can't see it. I can't show it to you because it's behind a paywall. <clears throat> but uh, it's by Matt Taibbi, who's the one who broke the Twitter file story. And it's the title of it is CIA Ukraine Exchange Pre-Divorce Propaganda. And it's talking about an article that just came out in the New York Times. It was supposed to be this big woo-ha expose. And it looks like what they're doing is they're ratcheting up the uh, Trump-Russia story again after it's already been proven to be baloney, which is, blows my mind. But basically, the only reason I brought this story up was because I wanted to talk about the CIA. Um as far as I'm concerned, the CIA is a rogue agency that needs to be eliminated from America. They, if I was president, my first act as president would be to dissolve the CIA. We do not need an organization that is running around the world, disrupting other countries, assassinating people, and just doing really ridiculous, stupid stuff that doesn't need to be done. Yeah, we probably need spies finding out what other countries are doing, but we do not need all these other black ops operations and all that stuff. So I would just blow the whole thing up and start over and say, I would have, I would ask Congress to write right into law that the CIA is not allowed to do any black ops. They're not allowed to do any assassinations. They're not allowed to meddle in the affairs of other countries. All they can do is spy and provide intelligence, period. That's what I would do if I was president. And for all of you foreigners that come to my channel, I apologize on behalf of all Americans for the CIA because they are a rotten to the core, disgusting organization that ought to be eliminated. Now, to something I can show you. Let's see. Uh, I got to get back to my browser here just a second. Okay. This is something that I wanted to uh, talk about just briefly. Um, and I, I'm going to play a little bit of it. Tucker Carlson interviewed, and I'm going to blow the name, I know I am, I think it's She Van Fleet. Uh, well, here, we'll play the first part and let Tucker pronounce it for you. Semblance to what happened in... Ch Shortly after George Floyd died, Memorial Day weekend 2020, people began to say that what was happening in the United States bore some resemblance to what happened in China 50 years ago, the Cultural Revolution, with Red Guards and struggle sessions, public humiliations, public atonements, a kind of secular frenzy that looked very much like a hate-centered religious right, the Cultural Revolution. But was that overstatement? Well, Xi Van Fleet has seen both. She's Chinese. She was seven years old in 1966 when the Cultural Revolution started and 17 when it ended with Mao's death in 1976. And along the way, she became one of its victims. She moved to this country, to Kentucky, in 1986, and she's been here ever since. So she has seen both revolutions firsthand, and she's written a new book comparing them with a warning. It's called Mao's America. And we're grateful to have her, Xi Van Fleet, in the studio with us now. She thanks so much. Okay, so there's just one other thing I want to do here. Uh, if I can find it, yeah, here we go. Um, in the in the Chinese Cultural Revolution, what I, 
got to turn the sound down for a second. Sorry. Uh, in the Chinese Cultural Revolution, what the Chinese did was, among other things, they had what they called struggle sessions. And the struggle sessions were an opportunity for people to share their faults with their neighbors, basically, to tell where they went wrong in their political beliefs. And the idea behind it is to just shame people into all thinking the same way. And so she gives an example of that from America and it blows my mind. And I'm going to show you that in just a second, but I want to mention one other thing. And that is, uh, one of the thing, I want another thing that they did in China. One of the first things they did was they had a slogan, eliminate the old. And they began by tearing down all the public statues that reminded people of the past. And then they followed up with actually going into people's homes and removing all the statues that they had in their homes. So if that rings any bells to you, maybe it will. You might just think about that. But this woman has written a book. She was born in China. She lived during the Cultural Revolution. She saw all of it. And then she came to America in the 1980s. And now she sees what's going on in America to be identical, identical to what she saw in uh, China. Okay, I think this is it. Let's see. Yeah. Um, political identity. Yes. And, uh, but things, you know, got so much bad in the uh, uh, 2020. When I saw the Antifa and the BMM burning our, our cities, I said, this is no longer some kind of troubling sign here, there. This is a full blowing Marxist revolution. This is exactly what I noticed uh, or what I witnessed during the Cultural Revolution. So I said, I got to do something. I have to get involved one way or the other. And that's the end of uh, uh, 2020, I got involved with the Loudoun, Republican, um, Loudoun County Republican Committee. And uh, after that, and uh, we got emails, you know, ask us to go to school board. And uh, I was never, never involved politically to go and, and give a public speech. It was just intimidating to me. And, but I got so much support from uh, the members say, I said, I don't even have children in school at that time. They said, it doesn't matter. We're all um, taxpayers. And then you should have uh, go there and, and voice your uh, your opinion. So I said, okay, okay. I've, I've been very alarmed about what's going on in our school. You are now teaching, training our children to be social justice warriors and to loathe our country and our history. Uh, growing up in Mao's China, all this seemed very familiar. The uh, communist regime used the same critical theory to divide people. The only difference is they use class instead of race. And back then, you know, you have to wear a mask. I said, thank yeah. God, I have to wear a mask and that to cover, you know, hide myself. So now, I went there see if I can find that, this other one. I have one. no clue. I have no clue what happened after that. Well, I, ha I have to say one of the, the features, just as a foreigner reading about it, of the Cultural Revolution that's always struck me is the mass hysteria. Mm -hmm. uh, somewhere in here, I can't seem to find it, is a... Uh, a group of women, wealthy women, having a discussion. I can't find it. It's in here somewhere. I'll put the link in the description. And you're welcome to go watch the whole thing yourself if you want to. But my only point in bringing this up is, if you don't think that we are in the midst of a Marxist revolution, then you need to wake up. Because we are. And this woman sees it clearly because she's been through it. She has lived through it. Uh, the part that I was looking for was, was a, a group of wealthy women were sitting around discussing <clears throat> white privilege. And this uh, girl who's, I, I don't know what ethnicity or race she was, was explaining to the, to the white woman how 
She was right then there while they were talking, committing microaggressions. It's all part of the plan. It's all part of the plan. And if you think for one minute that socialism is a good form of government, then what you need to do is you need to go research communist China, communist Russia, Vietnam, Cambodia. And what you will find is that all of those places were socialist governments and all of them killed millions and millions and millions of their own people. The Cambodians alone eliminated almost 21% of their entire population with murder. To save bullets, they grabbed children by the legs and slammed them up against trees to kill them. Yeah, that's socialism. It ain't this la dee da you know, we all get together, ha-ha, it's going to be love and peace and all that. No, sirree, Bob, it is not. And you need to you need to understand that. And if you got to do some educating of yourself, go ahead and do it. Because trust me, it is not something you want to have in your country. So that's the news for today. And I pray that your country, wherever you live, will never get to the point where it's like a communist government because. Probably you and I and the rest of the people that are watching this will be amongst those unfavored people that end up being killed. I also pray that you'll live an abundant life, that you'll live a long time, and that you'll be healthy throughout. And I pray that God will keep you safe from harm. I also pray He does the same for every person that you love. And I pray that you will not be anxious at all, but in all things through prayer and supplication you will let your request be made known to God and the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam Era Vet out.